In this video, we'll be covering the steps used to generate a simple table of contents for your publications in Scribus. We'll cover adding the table of content elements to our document settings, along with adding the required text frames and associated attributes. So let's get started. Welcome to class. We'll start by creating a document with a few pages to work with. Once our document is ready, we'll designate the first page in our document as the page that will hold our table of contents. To do this, we'll add a text frame to the page and make sure it fills all of the page between the margins. We can do this by pressing T on the keyboard, followed by holding the Shift key down and clicking on the page inside the page margins. This will cause the text frame to automatically scale to the full size of the margins, or full size of the page if you're not using margins. Then, if we don't have the Properties Control Panel open already, we'll go ahead and open it by pressing F2 on the keyboard, or by selecting Windows, and then Properties from the Standard Menu. With the text frame we just added selected, in the Properties Control Panel we'll navigate to the XYZ section and rename this frame to Table of Contents. Now this will give us a container to place all of our Table of Content information. Next, we will need to modify the current document setup a little to add indicators and map styles to our Table of Contents so that when we mark elements in our document, Scribus can identify them. So now we'll open the Document Setup Control Panel. We can do this from the Standard Menu by selecting File, and then Document Setup. In the left panel, we'll select Document Item Attributes, and then select Add in the bottom right of the Control Panel to add an attribute. This attribute will be used to mark text frames that will be referenced in the Table of Contents. Before we move on, we'll set its name to TOC, for Table of Contents, so that we can identify it later. Now back to the left panel, we'll select Table of Contents. When the right panel loads, we should see a series of new settings we can adjust. If you're creating the Table of Contents for the first time, you may need to delete the existing Table of Content item and select the Add button to create a new one. From this panel, we'll be focusing on the Properties section for now. Using each of the drop-down lists, we'll set the item attribute name to the name of the attribute we just added. We'll set the destination frame to the name of the text frame we want our Table of Contents to reside in. For now, we can leave the page number placement set to End and the paragraph style to None, as we haven't set up any styles for our table of contents just yet. And we'll leave the List Non-Printing Entries checkbox unchecked, and then select OK. So now we have a container to hold our table of contents, and we've adjusted our document setup so that Scribus can recognize items we mark as needing to be referenced. Now we just need to go to each page and add a frame and apply the previously created attribute. So let's walk through that now. Let's jump down to the second page in our document and add a text frame with a little content. Then we'll select the text frame right-click, and select Attributes. From this window, we will select the Add button in the bottom left corner, and when the new attribute appears, we'll use the drop-down to select the name of the Table of Contents attribute. Then, in the Value column, we'll type out the text we want to have appear in our Table of Contents text frame above. So for instance, if you want the table of contents to read Chapter 1 or Section 2, you would do that here. 
in the value column. For demonstration purposes, we'll set this to chapter one. Once we've identified the name and value, we'll select OK. Now we'll run through the same steps again on the remaining pages. Now that we have all of our pages set up and have applied our table of contents attribute to the appropriate frames on our pages, we can tell Scribus to generate our table of contents. We can do this from the standard menu by selecting Extras and then Generate Table of Contents. If we set everything up correctly, we should now be able to see that our table of contents has been populated with text. A few things to keep in mind when generating a table of contents is that it's just a text frame. So if you wanted, you could just open the Content Properties control panel and add styles, or edit the text frame directly or from within the story editor if you prefer. However, because the table of content is generated, if you regenerate the table of contents, all of your styles will be lost. Therefore, it's an extremely good practice to create a custom style for the table of content and set it from the table of content section of the document setup control panel. This way, all of your styling is located in one place and is retained regardless of the number of times you attempt to regenerate the table. In this video, we discussed the steps needed to generate a table of contents in Scribus. If this video helped you or you would like to have us cover a specific topic in Scribus, let us know in the comments section. See you in the next one.